All right. Well, this is us as we started. Welcome to Friday's masterclass on team meetings. Glad you guys are here. Really glad y'all are here. We've had a really great couple of weeks and I will I will catch you up if you weren't here the last two weeks. We will do some, some brief catch up. But just before we get started, we always start with big wins. So if you got a big win, go ahead and throw it in the chat. If you'd like to come off mute, say who you are, where you're coming from. Hopefully the weather hasn't affected y'all too bad, but give me some big wins. How are you? What are you thankful for? How can we start in gratitude this morning? Go ahead and throw those in the chat. Would love to hear with you hear how everybody's doing. Hopefully everybody's safe from the weather. So throw some big wins in the chat and love to hear what you guys are thankful for this morning. Any big wins? What are y'all thankful for? Thankful for Friday. Thankful for team meetings. All right. I'll let y'all throw those in the chat and thank y'all for being prompt. We have a GYN joining our direct care practice soon. Awesome. Stayed safe during the storm. Awesome. Big win. Relocated residence yesterday. All right. Before in Myrtle Beach. Love some Myrtle Beach. Brent's from Myrtle Beach. He loves some, loves the beach there in South Carolina. That's awesome. Crews made it home safe. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. You know, it, we take it for granted, but it is so good to start with something we're thankful for. It sets our perspective, aligns us to what's good, um, some positive things that are good. And I know business is hard, work is hard, but it's always good to keep our perspective. So I'm glad your family is safe. iPhone, Beth's out of town, vo volunteered, employee volunteered, check the warehouse. Awesome. That is great. Well, thank you all for joining. Again, I will be prompt and focused now that we have a Zoom and an audio, which is good. This is our team. Many of y'all may know us. We are a team of 10 with six professional business coaches. And we wake up with the goal of liberating business owners from chaos. That could be through team meetings. That could be through financial dashboards. That could be through long-term vision alignment to strategic things, more short-term strategic things. And so this morning we're talking about team meetings and we've been focused on that for a couple of weeks now. So here's our big five feedback loop. You may remember this. This is our internal way of making sure information gets shared as it needs to. And so these are the meetings that we say are critical for your business, no matter what trade you're in, what industry you're in. If we're going to share information and be connected and have trust in our teams, we want to have an executive meeting, which is, is this a worth, worth doing? Vision, strategy. We have team meetings. How are we working together? How does accounting work together with project management, work together with leadership, department meetings, work updates, strategy, sales, marketing, specific to the walls of business annual evaluations. Is my role aligned to me? Do I love it? Am I fit for it? Is this the best fit for the company? And then also maybe I'll do check-ins. And that's a more personal one-to-one -one, face to face time to connect with your manager or your boss. So that's kind of our big five feedback loop. Team meetings for us is a way to build culture. Last week we talked about what culture is. Culture is a is a biological term. It's a way of growing something in a Petri dish. And so culture is about ingredients. If these are the ingredients of our team meetings, inconsistency, no core values, unpredictability, no process, no communication and gossip. If that's the, the way we run team meetings, then we're going to have a problem with getting those things. Now, alternatively, if our team meetings are run with encouragement, clarity, in mission, vision, values, accountability, consistent communication, humor, and reinforced process. Well, that's a totally alternative expectation of what we're going to get out of team meetings. So those are the culture of, those are the values we want to ingrain in our team meetings. These were some of the bombs we talked about. How many of y'all have had meetings where these bombs have gone off? Technology doesn't work, like the Zoom audio doesn't work. And you're like, why is this not working? Technology is distracting. You've got phones going off. You've got emails going off. It's unpredictable. Team meetings aren't scheduled. They are canceled. They're off topic. They're agenda. They're not agenda driven. There's a lack of implementation, a lack of follow through. How many of y'all have done team meetings and there's been some action items and those action items just delay and linger and linger. So those are the bombs of team meetings. Great team meetings have defined outcomes, written agendas, a named leader doesn't have to be the owner of the company. In fact, we recommend not being an owner of a company, a schedule for completing the actions. I will email Sue by Tuesday at 2 p.m. and a follow-up and a plan for implementation. So if we're going to have great team meeting ingredients, 
we will get good results and engagement. So today, those were recorded. We sent those out with tools. Today, I want to build a team meeting agenda. So if you are an owner or you're a leader in a company, this is going to be a hands-on experience. And I really hope this will be, you'll take the time to do this work today. Can everybody see this team meeting agenda? I'm going to start with where we started two weeks ago. Our goal is to start with outcomes. What is What are the best outcomes of a team meeting? I'm going to go ahead and share this document. I'm going to put this in the chat. And so you can have this, take it with you. This is our my official team meeting workshop document. And it's got the five steps on the tabs below. And so and we started two weeks ago with outcomes. So you want to go here, go to file make a copy, save it on your on your drive as you'd want, and you can edit it as needed. So I'm going to run through this quick because I want to get to the agenda. Starting with outcomes, what do you want as an outcome? Begin with the end in mind. What do you want as an outcome? Number two, once you populate those outcomes, they're going to populate in these boxes. Let's add some tactics to get those outcomes. If you want your team to be excited about the vision of your company, well, then every week you need to be telling a story of how your work made a difference this week, right? So what if every every week at a team meeting, you had one person say, hey, will you share a core value that you've seen that work for us this week in a, in a way that we've engaged with clients? We've built a home. We've we've allowed a family to thrive because our home building was, was great. What a great way to get your team excited about the vision of your company. So that's one way. Team meetings, outcomes to tactics. Once you have tactics, we're going to build this implementation plan. We did this last week. And this starts with what are the four or five clear agenda items that have to be included? Who are the people that need to be in this meeting? What framework have other people used in this industry? We've got a lot of roofers, for example, and we'll cross pollinate and say, hey, how are you doing team meetings? How can we share schedules, share ideas on better implementation of team meetings specific to an industry. What's the frequency, the exact time that it's going to take place? Our team meetings are Tuesday mornings at 8 a.m. If you email, text, or call anyone at BOP from 8.00 to 8.59, we will definitely not be answering you. So if you're if you're trying to avoid us, that's the great time to do it. 8.05, we've, sh we've shared big wins. We do a devotional. We do some focus time. By 8.25, we're doing culture calendar, and we're running through it. It's an exact frequency every week. Drink our own Kool-Aid, and not in a weird way. We just, we're about it. Okay, implementation. Schedule the meeting with a Zoom link. Implementation is different than execution. A, a plan for implementation requires that when you get to execution, you are ready to do it. So when you get to that team meeting, there's a schedule, there's a Zoom link, there's an agenda, there's speakers, you've talked to the speakers, you've ordered food or coffee, you've printed agendas. All of this is the implementation plan that gets you to the master agenda. All right, so this is where we're going to spend our time today, and I, I will spend a some time here, and I'm happy to take questions. Would love for y'all to dig into this. This is our framework, and you'll see each color is going to be a big block. I think of these like Legos. So they're Legos I can move around, and I can make them work for the business that we're in. We always start with big wins. In our team, we start with business big wins in our coaches meeting. So we'll share something in, our, in one of our businesses or one of our owners that's that's gone well. We'll share things we're thankful for in our in our work. In our team meetings, it's a little more personal. We're going to be focused on big wins in family and personal life. My big win for last week was that I did a tr my first triathlon in the last two years, and I was happy to be racing again. I shared a little bit about my life. My team says, great, I'm so excited you're running triathlons. It's just sharing some time together and getting a little bit more personal engaged in person and work life necessarily intersect. So it's a good opportunity for y'all if you want to focus on, hey, let's do some personal big wins in our team meeting. So this is our first building block. Big wins. Always start every meeting with a big win. Next, culture calendar. This is one of the most powerful tools you can use in a team meeting because it is direct, it is efficient, and it is focused. And so what I mean by that, I put a culture calendar example on here. We run through this culture calendar pretty quickly. So I'll show you how kind of we run it. And I've shared this with you all before. We're going to highlight the week. Usually we've got dates populated in here. The date. So if we have our team meeting on Tuesday, okay, our production meeting is on Wednesday. Everyone that's on the production meetings knows about it. Great. Our sales meeting is Thursday. Check-ins are through the week. And then here, 
this is a good opportunity to talk about training. This could be HR training around days off. This could be HR training around health insurance, could be days off, any type of uh, training you want to do around the company. And then you can add some other training things down here. You could add a couple things around construction training. I've got remodelers that'll go through some of their critical path. They'll have 12 steps to remodel a kitchen, bath, house. And every week they'll go through one step of the critical path in training. So by the end of a quarter, by the end of a month, I'm oh, sorry, end of three months, they have gone through, they have trained on every single step of their critical path to be more efficient in remodeling. Now, these are usually videos. You're just reminding your team, hey, the video or the content is here. Make sure you watch it by the end of the week. You're not actually doing the training here, but you're just sharing it. Birthdays and anniversaries. You could do work anniversaries, personal anniversaries. You've got opportunity to share a little bit of life there, which is awesome. KPIs, maybe you're reviewing some stuff with a finance team. Say, hey, by the way, start of the month, we've got KPIs coming out. If you're involved in that, don't forget to check your email, review what you need to review and send it along. We do vision days with our team every two months. So in a team meeting, we're sharing that day is coming soon. That's next week, Thursday at four. Make sure you're there. Maybe you've got a client cookout twice a month and you're and you're doing some, you're having some time for that. We're going to put that on a culture calendar two months before, one month before, and the month of. Because two months before I need to plan it, one month before we need to review the plans, and the month of we need to make sure we're ready to execute. So if our team meeting is running well, we're reviewing future events months before they happen. Now, what does that do for your team? You know what it does? It tells them you're prepared, you're ready, you're not thoughtless, just running through the week with your hair on fire. You know hey, we've got a client cookout in two months. We want to make this awesome. We want to engage all of our clients in a great way. One month out, hey, how are we sharing accountability and the load for making this a success? And then the week of, hey, we're all excited about this. Is there any last minute details? So that you don't get to your client cookout on a Thursday at five and you think, what are we doing? Where's the food? What's happening? Who's supposed to be invited? Should we invite people last minute? total chaos, right? So this is just one way for us. Culture calendar, we review this for five minutes. We run through dates, we run through specifics, and that's part of our meeting cycle. Does anybody have questions about that? I would love, to, I know I'm talking a lot and I, I really want to make this a little more engaging. So does anybody use a culture calendar, number one, or two, does anybody have questions about how to build a culture calendar? Okay, quiet day. Here's real quick, I can, I can yeah. jump in real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just, just for some feedback, so you're not out there by yourself. We know, I know you don't mind. Thank you, my uh, friend. <laughs> hey, we do have a culture calendar. We incorporate. Uh, we try to be at least a half year to, to a year ahead, and that's all cult, culture events, company events, everything else. I don't do it myself. My team does it. She's not on right now, Heather. You've met, but we have I a very, her. very intentional culture calendar, and it, we and we do break out our calendars and our team meetings. You know, quarterly team meetings. We're you know we're a general contractor. We've got guys in multiple states. So we had to fly them in, abandon jobs, which is very uncomfortable for me to have everyone off the job site at the same time. So, but we're very intentional with, with the culture calendar and bringing everybody in, you know, so I think that's been a great add from DOP to us and our team. That's awesome. Thanks, Richard. Richard, what do you, are there any cool things y'all do quarterly or every six months or every year that you have found have been really good rhythms to uh, build culture or to engage clients? So yeah, we uh, for for internal we do a quarterly teams day where we like literally bring the entire team in and we structure it with uh, big wins. Obviously, we do some technology, some new rollouts of some sort, kind of somewhat of a little bit of a company maybe swag or little gifts just to keep everybody connected. Because like I said, we're in multiple states, and then kind of a Q and A. It's kind of a high level what we do. We you know we dive into more specific, deeper topics. Obviously, but that's kind of our. Our breakout, and we try to incorporate like our third, fourth quarter into like a team's giving day where we bring them in and almost do a full day. And we do like a, our take on a Thanksgiving meal as our internal team family, uh, work family. And that's been really, really cool. You know, we see a lot of feedback. And then the, the team started doing like a culture email that we send out quarterly and then also including that with clients and different family members and like some of the team spouses. So we're getting some feedback from the team spouses that, that now they're inclusive and they're, it's really cool to see some of the stuff we're doing. So that's awesome. That's, uh, Thanks for sharing our that. Our culture that's community really, really, really busted their tail to do some cool stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Van Brunt company in Dallas, Texas, y'all, they're doing, 
great work with financial dashboards, team meetings, check-ins, 12-week plans. They are uh, superstars. Richard, thanks for thanks for sharing that. Anybody yeah, else sure. have team meeting thoughts on around culture calendar, people that either use it or would want to use it? One of the ways we use it, so we've got a big 12-week live event is in December in Bluffton. In this one, we invite our spouses in same way. And so I was in Fort Lauderdale with Ashley and Scott this week, and Ashley's like, hey, by the way, is Kaylee going to come to to dinner? We're going to do a fun dinner. And I was like, absolutely. Just part of the rhythm of engaging uh, people outside of work. So good opportunity. All right, we're going to keep going. That is our culture calendar. So our first Lego of a team meeting, big wins. Second Lego is culture calendar. Third Lego. I like Legos. I, used to, I still like Legos and I'm almost 42. I hope that's not weird. I love Legos. Third Lego. 12-week plans, check-ins, last week action items, or and or share a core value story. If you haven't built 12-week plans and you're not running with them with the team, this you're not going to run this yet. But we use 12-week plans as a way to identify three most important goals for our quarter, and then we align eight to 10 action items from that, and we're all accountable to each other on those 12-week plans. So it's usually job-specific, job role-specific, job but we build those out every quarter. Quarter one starts in October, so next week, which is a good opportunity to jump in if you haven't done that yet. Check-ins, that can be just a regular, you know, we've got certain roles in our company that require certain check-ins. So that could be um, an admin, that could be uh, video content, social media. We'll check in on certain people regularly, every team meeting. Hey, what do you have for us this week? What kind of reels do you need? What kind of posts do you need? How can we add to what they're doing? Last week, action items, always critical. Close the loop on we talked about this last week. We need to follow up and follow through with making sure um, we're accountable to each other. And I would share, this one's a great one. Hey, can one person share uh, where you've seen our core values lived out this week? And you're you're just reminding people of the core values that are uh, you want to live out. So that's your third Lego. You've got big wins, culture calendar, Lego. And then this is the general business item. So this is kind of where I want to focus today. If y'all have worked with us, you know we run master process roadmaps, and a master process roadmap is your entire business on one sheet of paper, usually a Google drawing of some sort. So I can pull up a, let's see what I get here, Swink. Okay, we'll do Brett's. Brett built this. We built this with him. Here's your master process roadmap, and it shows uh, marketing, how you tell the world you exist, sales, how you build relationships and execute contracts, production, how you fulfill your contracts, and then administration what needs to happen. What we do in a team meeting is we take one of these processes with our team and we're going to look at it. Okay. So admin accounting, we're going to look at a, a process in admin and accounting. That's could be so call that invoicing. We're going to add that. So maybe we want to talk about at the invoicing process. Now in the team meeting, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the people that are engaged in invoicing. We're going to review our current process of how we invoice. So the job gets done, the work gets complete, the invoice gets sent, this person sends the bill, this person sends this. We're going to review all of the communication that needs to happen in that process with all of our team members. So what this does in a team meeting is it's intentionally choosing the types of processes we want to do well and reviewing them together in expected space. So if I tell my team, hey, next week we're going to review invoicing. So spend 10 minutes preparing for your part of invoicing. And if there's a headache you've got in invoicing, we've given it a home. We've given it a place to be and said, hey, you've got a headache. Let's see how we can better operate as a company so you're not frustrated. I'm not frustrated. Our communication's not doing this. Let's sync up on how we invoice and let's identify some challenges and let's do it better. So maybe that's an invoicing process. Maybe there's a, a new marketing push. Uh, we've got a sales and marketing workshop some of y'all may have done with us that focuses on where 80% of your business comes from and then aligning strategies to get ideal clients. Maybe you're going to talk in a team meeting about building that marketing process, identifying the core things you need to do, and then executing. So the team meeting is around building the marketing plan and how each person affects that marketing plan. So you've got somebody paying for marketing, you've got somebody writing copy, you've got somebody that's in operations that can provide extra support for or clarity around how the operation functions. 
It's the team meeting of how you guys are working together. Again, think togetherness, think communication, think trust. We're giving these issues a place to be so we're, um, we can have these conversations. Otherwise, if you don't have a team meeting, where the heck are you going to have these conversations? Over email, which is super low connection, right? Thumbs up. Over, are you going to have it over text? You're going to have a phone call, right? Like if, if you don't have a place in your business to have conversations around specific topics that need to grow, well, it's just going to seep through and it's going to be more chaos in how, how y'all run things. So that is our general business items. We'll add a couple of these ahead of time, a couple of days ahead of time. And then we'll send this out so everybody has a template ahead of time and knows what we're working on. And then at the end of the meeting, we'll have action items. Now, our team meetings are a true Catholic church service, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. I have gotten cut off at five, five o'clock on some coaches meetings before where I wanted to share some things. And Patrice literally just ended the meeting. She was like, we are done at five o'clock. So we keep these very tight. We move quickly. We're efficient because work is important, but we want to make sure we're, we're doing well with people's time. So this is our master agenda. And what I'd love for y'all to do uh, we've got an example agenda on this as well. So the sixth tab is an example that you can use for your business. But what I'd love for y'all to do is just go ahead and build this out. Take the time and write out a team meeting agenda. If you haven't been on these calls, if you've missed the first couple, you'll probably have to start with 02 or 03 or 01. Start with tactics implementation before you get to the master agenda, but follow that along. And so go ahead and build this agenda out, write down you know, the, the, the ideal agenda, and then then schedule it get it scheduled and execute on it. As we say, vision without implementation is hallucination. So I'm going to give you all a couple minutes. If anybody has any questions, that's the end of my spiel and content. I know I've been talking a lot, but I'd love, love for y'all. If there's any questions y'all have specific to team meetings, planning, implementation, execution, I'd love to entertain your questions. Lisa says the audiobook says how passionate helping under 500k annually. However, they won't advise me because my business doesn't make 500k annually. Well, I hope this was helpful, Lisa. Uh, we would love to advise you and you're welcome to be a client. We, we, we do try to send out a good amount of free content and do master classes like this that help anyone no matter where they are in their business. So I hope this will be helpful for you. I'm not sure what kind of business you have, but if there's something I can send you, either uh, support or some tools, I'd be happy to send that to you. So hope that's not true. Anybody have any other questions about team meetings or implementation? Okay, well, awesome. Thank you all for joining Masterclass. It was recorded and we will send this out with the tool. Thanks, Corporate Sanitation. Awesome. Okay, well, Lisa, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Sean, S-H-A-W-N, at mybusinessonpurpose.com. Monica says, can you answer my business question above? Uh, I don't see your question. Oh, here we go. Thanks, Monica. I did how to miss it. How do I get team meeting? Oh, I missed all these. How do I get team meetings, team members more engaged with the culture calendar? I created one and shared with all, but no one but myself will log in or use. I struggle with adding all of the culture items, newsletters, motivation Mondays, text group, and I just don't get a return response. Feel like I'm adding more work for myself, trying to get it all out. Yeah, that's great. Do y'all do team meetings every week? And are you reviewing culture calendar every week? Let's see if that's, if so, I might streamline it and try to get the most critical things done. So um, if I have a if I have a team that's really not engaging, I'm going to choose maybe one or two things to do really well. So that could be birthdays and anniversaries, and that could be a couple of things on the culture calendar to clarify. Sometimes as an owner, it does feel like that. It does feel like you're driving the ship and dragging people along. Another idea might be to get one of your team members to lead the meeting. So for someone else to drive, if you set up the framework and say, hey, I want you to grow in your leadership. I want you to grow in your capacity to facilitate some work. Would you be willing to quarterback this team meeting and run the culture calendar? Thirdly, I would say, is there a way to get buy-in from your team around some of the things they'd want included in a team meeting? So that could be, what are some critical areas of growth that we could grow as a team? What are some things we you would want to check in with about in our business? So allowing people to speak into that, you know, people will support that, which they help create. So uh, it's always an opportunity to bring people in and to share some of that ownership every two weeks on leadership meetings. Great. Yeah. So I would say streamline it, 
see if someone else can run that meeting and run it and then um, just continue continue with it. As Kimberly says, don't give up. It took a couple of years. That's awesome. It does take some time to build culture. It does take some time. Let's see, one more question. Culture counter sharing. Would it be possible the discussion leads to too much personal sharing in meeting? You know, it's possible. I think that as a facilitator, you want to be aware of keeping people on track. So our big wins just go pretty quickly. We just share, hey, happy for the storm to pass. I'm happy for this event, my kid's birthday. We try to keep it light and move it quick, but it's definitely possible. And I think as a facilitator, learning how to kindly move with people, say, hey, thanks for sharing that. That's probably, you know, I, I'd love to connect after we get done with this about something that's maybe more personal, if that's been been impactful for you. So that's definitely a leadership soft skill that's very helpful that you can move move meetings through content and keep people on schedule. So yeah, that's a good a good question. We we're a pretty connected team. So we have, I think, the trust and relationship where you know Thomas or Brent or they'll they'll cut off and say, hey, let's keep moving. That's thanks for sharing that. But I guess we we do get pretty personal. I mean we'll share some things. But I think keeping it focused and having that agenda can help move through if if you get stuck in a personal thing. So that's a great question. Okay. Well, that was great. Thank you all for jumping on. And I would encourage you to take, make a copy of this framework and take the next 25 minutes and commit to doing team meetings, commit to building out a structure. If you have any questions and you're a business owner and you want to ask questions about coaching or other things, we'd be happy to, to engage with you and talk with you. We do help businesses that are two to a hundred employees, usually around a million dollars to $2 million gross revenues are our low end with at least three full-time staff. And so we're happy to help everyone along wherever you are. But if you've got specific questions on how we can help your business, we would be more than happy to engage you. We've got, I think we just hit a hundred clients in the US. So we're waiting to hear if that's actually true, which is pretty cool. And so we've got six coaches that are coaching their rears off to uh to bring value and to provide clarity and for y'all to succeed. So any questions, reach out to us, but y'all have a great Friday and thank y'all for jumping on. We'll see you soon.